Hi everybody, this is Fox Nomad and today I'm here exploring... Wait, something's not right. But that's better. Hi everybody, this is Fox Nomad and today I want to help you travel smarter by taking a look at two of the best video cameras you can buy under $1,000 for your travels. The Panasonic Lumix G7 versus the Panasonic Lumix G85. <laughs> These are two very similar cameras. The G85 though is $1,000 and the G7 comes in around $500 with a full kit. That includes three lenses, a case, and a few other accessories. But as I mentioned, these are very similar cameras. So what are those similarities? First of all, these are both 16 megapixel cameras with a 4 thirds sensor. They both have a micro 4 thirds mount and they are both mirrorless. The G7 and the G85 have about the same battery life and they both shoot in full 4K. Neither the G7 or the G85 will overheat when shooting in 4K for long periods of time. On a full charge, you can get about 30 to 60 minutes of 4K footage and about 500 shots in my use. Even though the spec sheet says you'll only get about 350 shots per charge. There's a lot of confusion online as to how long these cameras can shoot in 4K, whether they have an automatic stop at 30 minutes like some cameras sold in Europe and Asia do. The G85 doesn't have any time limits. You can record until your memory card is full. But the G7 does have a software enforced 30 minute time limit, so it will stop recording after 30 minutes. There is a trick though, you can put it in service mode. I'll have a link to how to put your G7 into service mode. Once it's in service mode, you can record for an unlimited amount of time or at least until your memory card fills up on the G7. What are the differences? Well, let's take a look by having an old-fashioned shootout. Now, if there is one more similarity to these cameras, it's how terrible the audio is from the built-in microphone. Here's a comparison of the G7 microphone and the G85 microphone. All right, so this is a microphone test. This is me talking. This is the G7 and this is the G85. Even though the G85 sounds a little bit better to my ears, uh, for any kind of good audio quality, you're going to need to use the microphone jack. Both of them have a microphone jack on the left side. I personally use the Rode Video Micro. I'm very happy with it and I've traveled with it for over a year. One of the big differences between these two cameras is stabilization. The G7 doesn't have stabilization in the body. It only uses the stabilization that comes with whatever lens is attached to it. The G85 though does have in-body stabilization known as IBIS as well as using the stabilization in the lens and it has electronic stabilization to further help steady your video. If you're considering either of these cameras because you want to travel vlog then the stabilization is a deal breaker for the G7. The additional stabilization the G85 does make a huge difference and if you're going to be doing a lot of handheld shots or you're going to be travel vlogging, vlogging in general, then the G85 is the obvious choice to get. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the stabilization of the G7 versus the G85. These are two shots which are panned slowly, all handheld, and here's what they look like. As you watch the video shot on the G85, you'll notice the electronic stabilization kick in to help steady the shot. The G7 does have some trouble focusing sometimes. It's not very quick to focus. The G85 is better at focusing, but this is an issue that many users of the Lumix cameras have, is slow focusing. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you travel vlog a lot. Another thing to keep in mind is on the G7, the SD card slot is on the bottom, unlike the G85 where the SD card is on the side. So if you use a tripod on the G7, you're going to need to remove any tripod mount to get to the SD card if you need to switch one out. The G85 doesn't have this problem. Panasonic has moved the SD card slot on the G85 up to the right side. Now I focused a lot on video because chances are if you're watching this video or you're researching these two cameras, you're looking for the best video camera you can get. But it's worth noting and it's worth showing that these are excellent photo cameras. So here's a side-by-side -side look at some photos that were taken with both cameras in the same place and the same light. Overall, I 
find that the G7 adds just a little more contrast to the pictures and the video and has a little bit less dynamic range. But these are a major step up from your phone and a point and shoot camera. While those are good if you have them on you, of course, these cameras are going to be a big jump up. You can't go wrong with either choice. It's worth noting that the G7 is 100 grams lighter than the 500 gram G85, one advantage for travel. Now a lot of the differences between these two cameras and all these shots that I've taken is because of the difference in lenses. But these are the lenses that come with the kit. And if you look at the G7 kit, it comes with a lot. This is a really good deal for $500 to get all of these lenses, to get a case and all the other accessories. It's a very good deal. For the G85, you're just getting the body and a really good lens, but that's it. You're not going to get a complete kit. And $500 is a big difference to make for a camera. These are both great cameras. And if you're currently using a Lumix, one of the smaller point and shoots, uh, they are my favorite point and shoot cameras. I'll link to those up here. The controls are going to be very similar, so you're going to find the transition from the smaller point and shoot Lumix to be very, very, very smooth. And in the several weeks that I was testing both of these cameras at the same time, I leaned heavily on DSLR video shooters video guides. They're extremely helpful for not just the G7 and the G85, for a bunch of cameras. You will learn all of the settings so you can take advantage of all the controls and features that a particular camera offers. I highly recommend them and I'm going to link to them at the end of this video. So chances are you came upon this video because you were looking at 4K cameras that were portable, good for travel and under $1000. And that puts it in competition with the Sony RX series. And the main problem being with the Sony RX series is that after about 5 minutes shooting in 4K the sensor starts to overheat and it shuts down and it has to cool off which is kind of a deal breaker it might be a deal breaker for many of you it was for me so with both of these panasonic cameras you can shoot in 4k basically until your card runs out so it doesn't have an overheating problem you can shoot on the battery a good 30 45 minutes i've even shot up to an hour in 4k for vloggers if you're going to be shooting travel vlogs and that's what you really really want to do then the G85 is the obvious choice. The image stabilization really does make a difference, especially if you're gonna be going handheld a lot, you're gonna be talking into the camera, you need that stabilization that's gonna be very useful for your vlogging, for your travel videos, it's gonna be great. If you're just shooting videos that you wanna send home, you take panoramic, show your family when you get home, maybe keep mementos, then the G7 is gonna do absolutely great. And it's perfect for basic travel videos. For travel vlogging, I recommend the G85. Weatherproofing, I don't think is a big issue, mainly because I don't take my cameras out when it's raining, it's snow, drizzling, dusty conditions, you've got to be careful with all of your electronics anyway. It's weatherproof, which is a little bit more protection than you get from the G7, but if you're careful with your camera, it's not something that's going to really make a big difference for you. The real difference between these cameras is the stabilization, but for $500 with the G7, you're going to get three lenses, a case, filters, which is a great deal. With the G85, for about $1,000, you're going to get the camera and the Panasonic 12 to 60 millimeter lens. The $500 you save on the G85, money that can go for a ticket to somewhere pretty cool, like, I don't know, Iceland. I'll have descriptions to both of these cameras and links to them in the description below. Also in the comments below, if you can let me know, what do you think about these two cameras? Do you use a G7? Do you use a G85? What made you lean either way? Feel free to let me know in the comments. If you're trying to make a purchase decision also, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really like this video, please subscribe to the channel. I'll have new videos coming up every week. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. That would be the best blooper reel ever.